Ho, 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 ho. I'm Larry Bud Melman. Pause. President of Melman Productions and also Melman Bus Lines. Like most Americans, most of the year I'm only interested in buses, bus schedules and bus maintenance. But as we celebrate this holiday season, shouldn't we take time out to reflect on the things other than buses that we should be thankful for? We live in a nation blessed with good roads, clean highway rest stops, and many underpasses with generous 14-foot clearances, not to mention bus terminals, where you can have four pictures taken for under a dollar. <laughs> Laminate something in plastic, or just relax and make a special friend. Yes, there is so much to be grateful for this year. So why not really celebrate and take the whole family out for a real old-fashioned Christmas bus ride? I think they deserve it. Thank you. Merry Christmas. city that's looking a little more like Christmas. It's Late Night with David Letterman. Tonight, Christmas Carol, sung by New York's Guardian Angel. From SCTV, Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas. Comedian George Miller. And NBC Today Show host, Jane Pauling. Also, Larry Bud Melman reading The Night Before Christmas. A look at Christmas around the world. And a peek at the holiday spirit in New York. And now, a man who thinks Christmas comes but twice a year, David Letterman! Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Letterman. Here in New York City, 90 degrees, 86% relative humidity. Christmas is in the air, isn't it? <laughs> Let me just explain to you what we're up against here tonight. Uh, ever since I was a small boy, it has been a dream of mine to have the first network Christmas special of the season. <laughs> when I was about 10 or 11, I said to my mom, one day, Mom, I'm going to beat Andy Williams. <laughs> And so tonight we bring you the first Christmas network television show of the 1982 season. And by gosh, we're proud of it. And what a wonderful show we have assembled for you folks tonight. Uh, Andy Williams is not here. Uh, am I finished with that card? Oh, I'm not. What else do I have to... Lauren Green is not here, neither is Juliet Prowse. Okay. I'm not sure... <laughs> I'm not sure why those names were on the card, just perhaps left over from another show. Uh, on this program tonight from Second City Television, which is normally seen in this time spot, uh, they're on vacation tonight so we could have our Christmas extravaganza, Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas will be joining us. <laughs> from NBC's Today Show and a woman who is accustomed to working on holidays because of her duties on that program, Jane Pauley is here tonight. <laughs> A good friend of mine and a comedian and a guy who has never worked a day in his life, holidays or not, George Miller is here. <laughs> this is exciting. Did you tell him about this earlier? Oh, boy. To sing a medley of your favorite holiday songs, the Guardian Angels, ladies and gentlemen, are here. We're not even uh, close to being done here. We're also going to take a look at New York City. Boy, it really comes to life this time of year with all the lovely shop decorations and <laughs> activities down on the streets of uh, New York, New York, and uh, a special holiday reading, Christmas greeting from Larry Bud Melman, the man who produces this show. And have we introduced Mr. Paul Schaefer, ladies and gentlemen? Please say hello now. Thank you. You know, I get a little pensive around Christmas time. But I love it. It's a wonderful season. Merry Christmas, David. Thank you very much. Have a nice show. <laughs> Same to you. You know, uh, 
Uh, it's festive in here, isn't it? Isn't it? It's festive. Isn't it nice? it's, uh, it's darn festive. Um, now it's even more festive. Uh, in the past few weeks, we've all been bombarded with Christmas decorations, Yuletide carols, and the usual crowds of holiday shoppers. But in other parts of the world, Christmas has an entirely different flavor. Of course, every nation celebrates Christmas, but each country seems to contribute its own distinctive style to the holiday. So, in the spirit of friendship and understanding, we thought tonight we would take a look at Christmas around the world. Walk this way, won't you? <laughs> Christmas around the world. Let's go inside, shall we? Oh, it is festive in here also. May I have the cards, please? Thank you very much. Our first Christmas around the world exhibit comes to us from Finland. Now, in Finland, children leave their shoes outside the door on Christmas Eve, right there, to find them filled with nuts and raisins on Christmas morning. Now, in the afternoon, the thoroughly disgusted kids hitchhike to nearby Sweden, where Christmas is celebrated with drunken looting of stores and nude dancing. Hello, Santa. This is the display of Christmas in the Azores. Now, in the Azores, it's traditional for Santa Claus not to bathe for an entire year. <laughs> then on Christmas morning, delighted children select bits of food and other treats that have accumulated as Santa's beard from the previous 12 months. Some lovely things there. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, now this next uh, display comes to us from the celebration of the holiday in New Guinea. Each year, the native children of a primitive tribe of New Guinea plan a wonderful surprise for Santa as he arrives with his bag full of toys, and then you can... Oh, well, let's just move on, shall we? Now, this is a country that I've always been curious about, Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, the newspapers there print pictures of the country's 20 neediest people, I'm sorry, the 20 neediest people uh, at Christmas time. Now, here we see Sheikh Abu Ben Asmiad, who only owns two BMWs and not a single Cadillac. He's a, the neediest person in Saudi Arabia. Oh, and of course, south of the border, uh, children with sticks try to break open a gaily co colored pinata right here to release the goodies inside. It's often a donkey or a rooster. Let's see what we have here. This is just a little, uh, just a little happy guy there. Let me just get in with the... Uh, let's see what we've got inside. Oh, look, it's little candy intestines. Appears to be a liver, and I think we have some sort of a, could be the pancreas, or... A little closer to home, this is how they celebrate Christmas in Darien, Connecticut. This will be the Watson family. For the Watson family of Darien, Connecticut, Christmas activity begins on December 1st, when Stephen, pictured here, maliciously opens every window on the advent calendar, ruining it for the rest of the family. What Stephen's doing there. With that attitude, Mom thinks maybe they should just cancel the traditional activities they had planned, such as singing carols by the piano, which really upset Cindy because she really wanted to sing. Cindy upset there. And now, uh, meanwhile, Stephen wants to know why Cindy got more presents than he did. Dad answers that he likes Cindy a lot more and plans to send Stephen to a foster home. <laughs> well, that works. Christmas around the world. Why, here we have the Australian display. We might have trouble recognizing Christmas in Australia, but it's not so very different from the way we celebrate it here in the United States. I say it's not so very different from the way we celebrate... Okay. Oh, this would be uh, Christmas in Los Angeles. Uh, in Los Angeles, Santa Claus, pictured right here, is seen as an overweight, pathetic character. On Christmas Day, children put him on a rigorous program of diet and exercise. By February, jolly old St. Nick is down to a trim 160 pounds and is starting to feel good about himself. Unfortunately, by September, he goes on an eating binge again and the cycle starts all over. Yeah, so I'm starting to gain a lot of weight, but a lot of it is just retention. Once I start exercising, it'll all come off. You say... Well, what's, it, what's it to you, anyway? You say a lot of it is water retention? Yeah. Okay, a lot of water retention. <laughs> and finally, oh, here we are back in New York City, ladies and gentlemen. How much water would you say you retain over the course of uh, a couple of gallons of water Santa will be retaining? Here in New York City, where we're living presently, young men traditionally back up a van to a neighbor's house 
and load it up with presents. Lots of time, the clothing doesn't fit too well, but that's just part of the fun. There, there go the... Uh, could I borrow your chicken leg for a minute, Santa? It seems to be having some trouble with it. Well, you get the general gist of how it's celebrated here in New York City. We're going to pause now to uh, carry out the dead and the wounded. We'll be right back. Fun, isn't it? No Christmas special would be complete without the sound of a choir of angels. And my next guests have brightened up the New York City subway system and are here tonight to brighten up our Christmas extravaganza from New York, New York, the town so nice they named it twice, making their musical debut, singing a medley of Christmas favorites. Here are the Guardian Angels. Curtis, how are you? Thank you, sir. Come on here a second. Uh, uh, you probably uh, recognize this gentleman, Curtis Sliwa, and for folks in other parts of the country where the Guardian Angels are not uh, caroling or patrolling subways, uh, tell us about the group and what they do. Well, we're in 37 cities in the United States, even some in Canada, but we're best known for the subway patrol in New York City. That means eight of us, instead of singing, would actually be boarding the trains or on the platforms looking out for your protection. Fellas like you come on with suits like this and <laughs> valuables inside your pockets. We make sure nobody walks away with them and make sure you get home in one piece. <laughs> so you're looking out for wimps, essentially, is what you're doing. <laughs> um, I, you, have a, you have a female in the organization. What is your name? 
Barbara. Barbara, uh, uh, I didn't realize females were in the uh, guardian angels. Oh, worse than that, I have my wife who's second in charge who tells me she's the boss and she makes sure the females are treated completely equally. I guarantee you my foot, my ankle, my knee have been subject to my wife's attacks when we don't treat young ladies equally to the fellas. Did you want to, uh, Curtis, briefly introduce the, uh, the folks in the group who were kind enough to carol for us tonight? Oh, sure. Okay, in back we have little John. John, how are you? All right, we have Gary right here. We have Eric. We have Kurt. Carlos Valentin. Andy Hollywood Rios. <laughs> Barbara. And what a fitting name for a guardian angel, Justice. <laughs> well, Curtis, uh, thank you very much for all the wonderful work in uh, the city of New York, and thank you very much for caroling for us tonight on our Christmas program. Uh, Have a pleasant holiday. Where's our record contract? Well, we'll talk to you a little bit later about that. <laughs> Curtis Lee and the Guardian Angels. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Jane Polly will be joining us in a few minutes. Uh, George Miller will be out here. But you know, it's all well and good for me to sit here and celebrate Christmas, but sometimes I get the feeling that a lot of you young people out there just don't care about getting into the holiday spirit. That's why I've asked our band leader and musical director, Mr. Paul Schaefer, to speak to you kids out there about why Christmas... <laughs> why Christmas isn't so old-fashioned. Paul? Thank you, Paul. I want to speak to you uh, younger guys and gals <laughs> You'd kill a monitor if you would Maybe watching and thinking uh, I can't get into this show It's this holiday stuff It's for squares Well I want to tell you cats something <laughs> Nothing could be farther from the truth I mean that sincerely Take the music for example Sure maybe it's hard to get into a, Kind of into a traditional song like Uh But I'll tell you something, put a kind of a Phil Spector beat to it. Santa Claus is coming to town, Santa Claus is coming. Now this is as hip, really, as anything that Springsteen has ever done, live or in the studio or whatever, you know. And, and listen to this, what better excuse to get your arms around a very curvy chick and a little bit of Christmas mistletoe, you know what I mean? It works every time because you... Well, thank you, darling, isn't that nice? Thank you very much. When it comes to the original beatnik, Santa Claus, number one in my book. Talk about that white beard, crazy red threads the guy has, souped up jalopy. Let's just say that he can sit in with my band any time the cat wants. Oh, and troops, one more thing. Dave may look establishment in his suit and tie, but don't write him off as an L7. He... That cat is bucking the establishment in his own subtle way. I guess what I'm trying to say, Dave, is don't ever change. Back to you, boss. Merry Christmas. Paul Schaefer, what a... Very nice, Paul. Thank you, Paul. I, I, I hope the, uh, the young kids uh, dig what, what you had to say there. <laughs> oh, okay, let's get back to the show. You know, um, Christmas, in New Christmas in New York City is a very special time. All the decorations, there's a certain feeling in the air. Everyone is just a little friendlier on the street, so we went out to try and capture some of that magic for you. Take a look now, won't you? Have you started your Christmas shopping yet? No, not yet. I'm a late starter. Do you, do you get the feeling that people are friendlier this time of year than other times of the year? So, I find that so, yes. Uh, wouldn't a nice crackling fire and some hot chocolate be good at this time? Oh, at this time? No, I don't think nice. so. <laughs> I think uh, Christmas is uh, being overly commercialized. Oh, heavens no. 
<laughs> do, you ever, do you ever long for a nice crackling fire and maybe some hot chocolate this time of year? I certainly do. <laughs> that there are fewer decorations up than there have been in the previous uh, seasons? It's about the same. About the same? Yeah. Uh, and what are your plans for celebrating the holiday? Like every year. Uh -huh. Eat and get fired up and hang out with the family. Now, when, when you say get fired up, what exactly does that mean? You know, drink wine uh -huh. and sort of things like that. <laughs> Do you have your shopping done yet? No, I'm in the midst of them. Part of them done already. I can. I will continue later on. Yeah. And uh, what do you hope Santa brings you? Beg pardon? What do you hope Santa brings you? I'm not expecting anything from Santa. I'll give Santa something. <laughs> It's quite a beard you have. Well, it's really a big mustache. But how do you how do you celebrate the holidays? Yes, uh, I just try to be extra good and jovial. Yes, Christmas in New York City. Jane Polly is here, and when we return, she'll be sitting right there. So come on back. Did I give you? Oh, this is for you, Will. There you go. Merry yeah, Christmas man, to you, Merry Steve. Christmas. I think yours is right over there by the. Okay, and Paul, I'd like you to have this. Oh, Dave. There you go. Thank you very Just, uh, much. Just my way of saying. Yeah, yeah go ahead and uh, open those up, gentlemen. Yeah, the, the band, ladies and gentlemen. Are. Paul Schaefer, uh, Hiram Bullock, and uh, Will Lee, Steve Jordan. And it does my heart good to see these guys. Did you wrap these yourself? Yeah, I did. As a matter of fact, I hope you enjoy them. Look at this. What are you? It's it's Schraff's the holiday sampler. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank sure. you, guys. Thank sure. you. Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> well, what did you get? I got a, uh, just what I wanted, a Schaefer pen and pencil oh. set. Oh, great. Steve, I hope you have thanks, a lot of Steve. fun with that, Will. Thank very you very thoughtful. much for all your help. Yeah. Steve, what did you get? Well, I got a pen and pencil set, too. Uh, oh, that's Schaefer, that's, that's right. Maybe too much. Hiram, what did he give you? I got a sampler. Oh, I got the boy. Sampler. You know, uh, the yeah. sampler. For me, these are gifts that keep on giving, and thanks again, gentlemen. Thank uh, now, oh, here we are over here. Uh, my next guest, uh, I'm always delighted to appear on television with this person. Uh, she, of course, has her own show. Uh, she is, a, well, it's not ex exactly her own show. Uh, let's just start over, shall we? <clears throat> You know, I'm always delighted to appear on television with my next guest, either on her show or on my show. She is a bright and talented newswoman, and more importantly, <laughs> a Hoosier. At this joyous time of year, it's a special pleasure to welcome Jane Pauley. Being someone who would wear a wool You're scarf all bundled up there and a good idea. July. You don't want to get chill blains. Justin, you gave presents to the guys, but yeah. nobody brought presents for David but me. Jane, you brought a present. That's very sweet. You know how hard it is to be away from home on the holidays. Yeah. And here's David in the big city. I bought something a little, a little memento from home. Oh, that's very nice of you. And uh, I'll open this after the show. No, you won't. <laughs> Well, it's, uh, while you open that, I'll take this off, okay. if it's okay with you. Is, is this the first time you've taken clothing off on television? <laughs> this uh, feels like it may be a book, perhaps a nice coffee table. Uh... Everyone should have one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's open this. Up. Oh, no. Well, uh... we're in for a long night now. <laughs> What, uh, what Jane has done here is probably everyone's worst fear in life. Uh, this is a copy of my high school yearbook. They're and still selling them. I'm wondering if you're 
telling you, 1965 was not a very good year because they still have them. 65. They're still available, $15. You could buy them like I no, bought No, wait a minute. Them. Where did you go to buy this? Broad Ripple High School in Indianapolis. I bought that thing for $15. You know, it's a funny thing about 1965. That was the one year I was ill when they took the pictures. That's not there. true. I don't think they're really No, no, no. I had the... I had the... Uh, well, stomach we suspected flu or something. the guy I might had, uh, behave this way, so... Look him up, uh, this, look him this up. This is going to be very embarrassing. Look yourself up. Your senior picture is in here with all of your high school activities. Ins <laughs> <laughs> Inspiration through heritage, dedication to achievement. Activity. The school is the heart of ripple life, ladies and gentlemen. Are we, are we, are we? Now he's doing time You're now. I know that's right. We've got uh, right oh next my. to Sharon Darlene Legg. Sharon Legg. I remember Sharon. David Michael Letterman. Now, yep. you, were, you were a basketball player when you were eight. <laughs> Can we get a little closer on that, please? Wait a minute. Get that yeah. face back. I was just about to say that when, when David was a freshman, according to his book, he was into track and basketball. But he put away those athletic things. By the time this picture was taken, when David Letterman was a senior, he was into power. <laughs> David's sole activity his senior year, <laughs> sole activity his senior year, David was a hall monitor. <laughs> Pretty damn good hall yeah. monitor, though. But that's not your only, your only Boy, tribute that's quite a here. photo. You know I how was, yearbooks uh... always have ads? They sell ads in the oh, local... Oh, jeez. The lo local business people. Now, here's David with the... Uh, this must have been near Christmas, because here you are doing your Christmas oh, shopping my. at the local canned goods department of... This is the store where you used... The Atlas Supermarket yep. where you 54th used to... 54th and uh, College, I believe. Yep, there I am. The Christmas this was the year I was voted most likely to do something awful with power tools later <laughs> in life. <you> know? <laughs> oh, my. One final reference, just, just for me. Following you by about a couple years was uh, uh, a guy named Tom Davidson, who was better known in those days as Crash. Now, Crash defiled those very holes that you monitored so carefully. A couple years later, rode a motorcycle up and down the halls uh, near graduation. My. Um, it's only been recently when my cousin Tom... This is in your family. My cousin Tom admitted that, yes, it was he who rode the Harley Davidson up and down the halls. That's my cousin Tom. Let's hear some applause There's for my Tom right cousin there. Tom. Now, where did you go to high school? Why do you ask? <laughs> <laughs> of course, I'm sure that the, uh, your own yearbook would probably still be on sale. I'm sure they sold out. Where, what high school was it? I went to Warren Central. Warren high Central. School. See, followers from Warren Central. But I wanted to point something out just briefly here. When you, I just opened this uh, to a page at random, and, and this is not Jane. These are just other people. I look like all of them. But they all, <laughs> they all look frightened, don't they? <laughs> they look like they're on some sort of curious medication that's causing them to, to just. Well, that was, uh, boy, that's just a, yeah, Did anybody I was, ever ask why they called it Broad Ripple? Well, I know why they called it Broad Ripple. It was on the banks of uh, a river, and uh, when you, I don't know, it was something to do with ripples in the river, or, or I don't know. Close Strange enough. name. Yeah, how are, how are things with you, by the way? Very well, thank you. Thanks for bringing that out here and humiliating me beyond belief, uh, although I do a pretty good job of that on my own. It was a Christmas present, I hoped it had been it's very sensitively nice. chosen. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> don't, don't be sorry. Now, tell me about your new uh, 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 sleeping habits. <laughs> You have, to, you have to get up a little earlier. No, no, I, I sort of paraphrase that. You sure? You took some liberties. Says you have to leave home oh, a lot earlier, earlier now, now for the early today show. This is show. true. We started uh, this week uh, early today, uh, which we call E.T. It's very nice. Oh. Well, the crowd seems to like it. <laughs> E.T. Is, um, is, is on in, in many places around the country prior to the Today program, either immediately prior or a half hour prior. Check your local listings. Mm -hmm. But what that means is that I get up at least a half hour earlier than I did. What's significant about this is that I come to work now uh, a half hour earlier and have noted an interesting transition that takes place in the city. Now, at 5 or 4.45 to 5 when I leave now, these are people who are sort of Creeping home after mm. a long... These are your viewers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now, for six years on the Today program, I went to work at more 5.15, 5.30, a half hour, 45 minutes later. 
Those are my people. You know, the city starts waking up, and uh, milkmen come out, the postman, the city is coming awake. But your people are different than my people. Either that or these are the shopping shoppers rushing home with their holiday treasures. Now, uh, so you're, what you're saying is you see a... Uh, a new side of the city. Less I've desirable uh, folks out on the street that hour we of the day. We could call them more interesting. Do they know you? Do they all say... There's do Jane. I stop and chat? Well, I don't know. Do you? Do you? <laughs> no. No, the idea is to keep moving. Keep moving. Just Always ride on by. Keep moving. Yeah. Do you get a lot of mail on the uh, television program? I know the show generates a huge quantity of mail, but you personally, Phenomenal people... Phenomenal amounts of mail. ...inquiring... Uh, you think Santa Claus gets mail at Christmas? <laughs> get a lot of... I got a letter, as a matter of fact, that I just happened to bring with me. This is really sweet. Now, there is a place in Indiana called Santa Claus, Indiana. Really. It's a real place. They have a post office and everything. When I was a little girl, I went to Santa Claus, Indiana, and it's a year-round place where they you buy Christmas toys and, and lights, and Santa Claus is on duty in Santa Claus, Indiana, year-round. Did you ever go there? Never was there. I always heard of the legend yeah, of this it's, place. It's Never. near Jasper, Indiana. It's just a, it's a real charming place. Well, there's this guy there named Jim Yellig, who has been a Santa Claus at Santa Claus, Indiana, since after World War I. That's a long, long time. Long time. How old exactly is uh, Santa now? Well, that's the reason I mention it, is that he's only 88. And in order to get his name mentioned on NBC, on our program, he's going to have to wait 12 years until he's 100, and Willard... Willard will mention anybody mention who is birthday. 100. So the guy's only 88, but they're having a Christmas in July party for him on July 23rd at the Holiday Inn there in Jasper. Uh-huh. Oh, and yeah, I just, like I know. I just thought it'd, <laughs> I'd be nice for you to wish well, Jim yeah, like a special uh, a happy, Christmas. Happy Christmas, happy birthday, or whatever to you, Jim, and, and keep up the good work yeah. and uh, have fun at the UL. Well, of course, you can't go wrong with the Holiday Inn in Jasper. And, uh, <laughs> it's, it's very nice. Now, in addition to this sort of thing, do you get uh, uh, people writing you about personal a a portions of your life? or <laughs> No, do you? <laughs> About your life? What, do you <laughs> I mean, do they... what are you getting at here? I can, I can help if I... <laughs> um, I don't see that one. Well, let's see. Wait a minute. Let's, how how far have we gotten? We get, took care of that. <laughs> Embarrass Dave with the photos. All right, we've done that. <laughs> Say hello to the old guy. We've done that. Um, we're down here to... Oh, do people write complaining... Oh, no, this is an interesting question. I'm just Let me ask you this. Oh. Do people write complaining about cat hairs on your clothing? Has NBC, did NBC ask you to ask me that? I don't know. It just came from... Uh, I'm wondering if, if the wardrobe department wanted me no. to give me a message about does it. Does this mean anything to you? Do you have a cat? Let's just start there. Well, let's... I guess I. what that's getting at is when the folks at home write you letters, it's not about the interview you conducted with um, a head of state mm -hmm. or with a, a, a corporate executive. It's about... What was wrong with your hair that day, or the button <laughs> that was loose yeah. on your jacket, and did you know? Yeah. That kind of thing. They're more I yeah. interested Those in your hygiene America's than world peace. Television and letter writers. Uh, we're going to pause here. We have uh, many, many important things to cover with this young woman, and we'll do so moments from now, so join us if you will. holiday classic keep on trucking wasn't it paul <laughs> so on your christmas album this of course is uh, jane Pauley, and uh, we're talking about cat hairs on your clothing and you I plead ignorance with that. well we're done with that yeah. then we've moved on to working on holidays as uh, one of the hosts hostesses well we always tape our, our holiday program in advance we'll we'll do our christmas program and get all dressed up and festive around december 15th really yeah well how can you keep the the, the show current and uh, vital if it's taped a couple of weeks we're ahead professionals so you just... <laughs> Boy, that is professional. You know, part of the charm of, of, of a, a program like this and, and our is the... Um, uh, it's, it's so real. You know, the fire in the fireplace back there is so real. And periodically, you'll see a hand dip down the back and maybe yeah. like a little sterno on the fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there are presents over there. We have children. Now, we top you. And from time to time, we will decorate our set with live children. Mm -hmm. The children, perhaps, of, of some of the moguls. 
And oh, mobile one time, child, one time <laughs> I pointed out those beautifully wrapped, beautifully wrapped packages to one of the little children, a little three-year-old, a beautiful little girl named Linda. And I said, Linda, what do you, would, you, would you like one of those presents? She's, nah, they're all fake. <laughs> The next generation. Typically, the child know. of a mogul. Sure. Uh, do we have? Uh, are we having children on this show? Should we, You're uh, in children. Yeah, we'll have some Clever. children on the show, but uh, I don't know if we could afford the handler. That was extra, so <laughs> there's a debate on that. Uh, well, now what are we doing? We got to say goodbye to Miss Polly. Thank you very much, Jane, for the Thank lovely you. gift. Continued Mary. success with you and your career. You all set? Thank you, Jane Polly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. And now for a very special treat for the young and the young at heart, here is Larry Bud Melman, president of Melman Productions and Melman Bus Lines, to read the traditional night before Christmas. So snuggle up to the TV and listen along, won't you? My God. Was a night, was a night before Christmas. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. Oh, now I gotta read Spanish. Te cuco a vez vu. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And, oh, my God. And Santa Claus came down the chimney. <laughs> Came down the chimney. No, I, I don't know them. Oh, God. So, as I was saying before, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And all St. Nicholas came down through the chimney and gave out the presents to the children. And that ended Christmas. <laughs> As I was saying before, and, and it turned out to be a very Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. It was magic, wasn't it? <laughs> as much as I hate to say this, we're gonna pause. And we'll be right back? Fine. Thank you, Paul. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Christmas is a time to spend with both friends and relatives, and my next guest is neither. No, we're just kidding here. Here to spread his very own version of holiday cheer, our friend and comedian, George Miller. You know, the Christmas holidays are supposed to be a joyous occasion, but many people get depressed around that time of the year. Now, I don't think that's so bad. In fact, I think if you're going to feel lousy around Christmas, you should go all the way and deliberately do things that will make you as miserable as possible. This eliminates confusion and the hope that things will get better. So here are just a few uh, suggestions to add to your holiday depression. Always try to spend Christmas Eve riding on a Greyhound bus. <laughs> If this is impossible, try to be living in real seedy quarters on Christmas Eve. The Ace Hotel would be a good choice. For dinner on Christmas Day, have vending machine snacks, or go out to the restaurant or to the airport by yourself and have dinner at a host restaurant. Try to be at a laundromat on both Christmas and Christmas Eve. If you have time after finishing your wash, don't forget to attend a pornographic movie by yourself, of course. 
Now, this is very important. Plan things so you will be coming down off speed about 8 o'clock on Christmas Eve. That horrible feeling will add extra depression in almost any situation. At about 11 o'clock on Christmas Eve, try to watch an outdated rerun of Meet the Press. Listen to Mel Tillis sing, Ruby, Don't Take Your Love to Town, about 15 or 20 times. In Christmas Eve, by playing that most demanding of all card games, Solitaire. On Christmas Day, call up bowling alleys and ask them to page anybody. And for your New Year's resolution, vow to continue living in the past. Remember, these are just suggestions. You may be able to come up with depressing ideas of your own. If you do, send them along to me so I can use them too. After all, Christmas is a time of the year we should all share. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, George. Hi, Dave. It's very nice. Oh, it's just a... Uh... Oh, kind of moist me up there a little bit. That's kind of tearful. Yeah, golly. How, how did you uh, develop such a strange attitude toward the holiday season? I think originally, this was in, I'll never forget this, in first grade, we're like six years old, and Mr. Ogden, our first grade teacher, I think the day before the Christmas vacation started, announced to the class, there's no Santa Claus and there's no Easter Bunny. However, Hitler is alive. Mm -hmm. Kind of. And I think that was, that was probably it. And there have been other occasions. Probably, I guess, the worst Christmas Eve I spent was I was on the road and my car broke down and I had to get a uh, used car. Mm -hmm. And I spent the entire Christmas Eve over at Jack Ruby Pontiac, which uh, <laughs> not the best Christmas Eve that, that you could hope to spend. He, he was a Pontiac dealer? He was a Pontiac dealer at one time. At yeah, one, one time. At one yeah, time. Yeah. Oh, be darn. And then he had other that. experiences yeah. later on in his life. <laughs> I thought. Jack Ruby Pontiac. You didn't know that, huh? No, I didn't know he was. Just an educational bundle. But he had a Ford agency there for No, him. no, it was it was Pontiac. Pontiac. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, my I'm mother always uh, well, one thing. This is like an upbeat because that was all kind of negative. My my mother and I always try to have at least three or four unfortunates over to the uh, to the house on Christmas Day, uh, men and women who have no friends or relatives. And uh, whenever we say the you know the holiday blessing, I always try to give special thanks that. I don't have to eat the rest of my meals with these people, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> kind of a softy, huh? Yeah, you know, we were talking, you guys were talking about this, uh... <laughs> well, let's not get into that now, but, uh, you guys were talking earlier about the, uh, the, uh, commercialization of Christmas, oh, which sure. I just hate. hate I that. think that the, the, uh, the S's in Christmas have been replaced by dollar signs, mm -hmm. and it just makes me sick to my stomach. <laughs> But I do a little acting there. Yeah, you did a nice job. Thank you. Uh, now, I noticed when you travel, uh, you're out here again from your home in Los Angeles. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, you, Los Angeles. you watch a lot of television. A I lot of TV. I was going to talk about that the last time. That's mm -hmm. right. A lot of TV. And uh, I wanted to give a plug to the TV Guide, since they never give a plug to me whenever I'm on any uh -huh. program. And uh, you always know what's going on. Like, my, I'm really into, which, by the way, I love to say into. Mm -hmm. I'm, really, uh, <laughs> I'm really into the people's court. And, uh, yeah, yeah, you too? Yeah, you too. And, uh, yeah, tonight I have to hurry home, in fact, after the show, because they're having the case of the bumped sausage man. And I, I was right up there with a Scopes trial in Sacco Banzetti. So uh, I wanted to watch that. And also, a TV Guide, I just read this, that uh, Goofy and Daffy Duck now have their own shows on Saturday mm -hmm. morning television, which I, I think that's very good. I think it's important that little kids learn to identify with retarded animals. <laughs> so... Uh, we, and my friend, I was going to mention this on the last show too, my friend Gordon McClee was with me backstage in the dressing room and I've been really getting into game shows recently because of Gordon. Uh, he won a lot of money. He has tremendous knowledge in specific areas. He won $40,000 on a game show. His uh, category was athletes who have been charged with rape. So... <laughs> That's almost all of them, I believe, uh, at this oh, point in no, time. No, 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 no. That's a joke That's, there. Of course, it's, uh, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. It's interesting. And, uh, uh, <laughs> what I do, uh, what I do is, uh, do you, want, you watch the news, I know. I do? I've, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do, I watch the news every, see if you do this too. I watch the news every day at 5 o'clock. If a crime's been committed and the crook gets caught, 
I always think maybe I could have done better. Now, kidnapping is the best example. Kidnapping is always the same. They grab somebody from a prominent family, they ask a half a million bucks, the FBI is called, and they get caught. Now, see, what I would do, I would eliminate the FBI because I wouldn't mess around with anybody prominent. I'd kidnap maybe 5,000 ordinary people and demand six, seven dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would do it. That would do it. Now, we have to pause. I know you always like to mention your upcoming engagements. Oh, uh, I do. You, you comedians call them, what? Gig, gig, gigs. Yeah, I'm gigs. really into gigs. Gigs, yeah. Yeah, I'll be at the Ice House in Pasadena That's tomorrow night. That's the new night. Ice House, That's isn't the it? the new Ice House. Brand new Ice House. As opposed to the old Ice House, uh -huh. yeah. And that'll be July 10th tomorrow night, and I'll be at the Detroit Comedy Castle. The Comedy Castle, yeah, yes, uh, sir. Yeah, the following week. Yeah. And I think good seats are still available so for that. So, folks, uh, <laughs> probably call Ticketron and make Ticketron. sure you yeah, get those good, tickets. And Yeah, well, thank you very much for celebrating your holiday with us. Merry uh, Christmas year. to you, too. Same to you, sir. Even yours. Uh, George Miller, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to pause. <laughs> Wouldn't be Christmas without visitors from the great white north. And tonight, we have several. From SCTV, please welcome Bob and Doug McKenzie. <laughs> No, uh, you can't start until uh, my brother does the theme, eh? Go. Oh. Uh, well, don't you help me with it? Like... Oh! Christmas! Yeah. Uh, in July. Okay, here's our Christmas July theme. Christmas. Oh, sorry, I got into the new one. Oh, I got the music. That's our theme, eh? You wreck it, eh? You wreck it. off. Oh, okay. A uh, good day and, like, Merry Christmas, eh? Yeah. In July. <laughs> I'm Bob McKenzie. This is my brother, Doug. How's it going, eh? We got, like, some topics, eh? Yeah. There's beauty having Christmas now. Like, I got, like, 160 days to get a date for New Year's, eh? <laughs> okay. Okay. He calls up and say, hey, you hoses want to come down Christmas? <laughs> we'll take holidays wherever we can, eh? Yeah. It's like the whole year's a holiday for us, eh? So Yeah, we we're on holidays more. anyway. Yeah, we don't mind, eh? Okay, what'd you... <laughs> what'd you get me? Huh? What... what did you get me? Oh, well, I got you something that, uh, uh, that I'd rather give you later, okay? okay? So let's do another topic. Oh, uh, okay. It's a surprise. It's a big secret. I don't want to blow it, eh? Yeah. Okay, uh, another topic then. Uh, okay, you know, uh, you can use like uh, deciduous trees, eh, for Christmas in July. Those two people knew what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so like, uh, they call us up to come down here for Christmas in July, eh? So we came down last Wednesday to see the Macy's Parade, eh? Where was it? Yeah. <laughs> Take off. You knob. He's loaded. Don't mind him. I am eh? not. Too much eggnog. Beer nog. Beer nog. <laughs> How do you make beer nog, eh? Uh, you take the carton and, like, empty all the nog out, eh, and, like, fill it up with beer. <laughs> and then go. Bob's your uncle, eh? You can drink away until your face falls off. His, your face has fallen off, eh? <laughs> okay, okay, let's, look at come it. on, let's your get on topic. Gone, eh? Don't, oh, don't topic. humiliate me. Do a topic. Okay. A lot of people uh, don't know uh, how to recognize Santa in the summer, eh? Oh. Okay, because, like, yeah. really, eh? Like, you know him from, like, uh, December, eh? Yeah. Okay, first of all, he drives a Winnebago. <laughs> no reindeer, because they got no wool, because they take off the sweaters, eh? Yeah, they and shore them in the summer. And he has, like, a, a, a crew cut, eh? And, uh, and no beard, because it's summer and hot, eh? He looks like uh, Curly from the Three Stooges. <laughs> And, uh, and, and instead of, like, going ho, 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 he goes woo, 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 woo. Yeah, good. That's what, that's what Santa does. Woo, woo, woo. And Santa's helpers are, like, Mo Claus and Larry Claus. <laughs> yeah, and, like, for next, uh, when he comes in, eh? When he comes in, he doesn't come in through a fireplace, uh, the chimney. He comes in through the air conditioner. And, like, don't leave him, like, milk and cookies, eh? No. Leave him a, an assignment, like, uh, Please fix the kitchen sink. It's leaking. <laughs> so, like, if you want to see Santa, he's like curly, eh? He'll be there in the morning still working on it, eh? <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay, I none think of we, my topics are working. We eh? all really appreciate uh, your idea. I got new boots, eh? 
Yeah. But last Christmas. Geez, my beer went over. Beauty! He wrecked his beer! Oh, no. Quick, get a dog in here and lick it up, eh? That's beer and orange juice. What a nice concoction. I like that. That's yeah. a new one. That's some kind of screwdriver, eh? Okay. Look at you. You've really changed. Look at him for a sec. What? Look at his face. Look how dumb his stare is. Have you ever noticed that? Take off. When look you look at this guy's making weird faces, eh? Cut? Oh, okay. Oh, good day. Yeah. <laughs> to the great white north, Bob and Doug McKenzie. We're going to pause. We'll be back to talk with Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas right after this. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Uh, Dave Thomas and Rick Moranis are here, and it's uh, Christmas uh, here, as you gentlemen mentioned, in July. You journeyed mm -hmm. down from, uh, now you're always, you live in Toronto. You came, is that right? Yes, we do. Yeah, and, and you... we journeyed down by plane. <laughs> Must have been very exciting. Yeah, it was. Now, uh, let's talk a, a little bit about Bob and uh, Doug. How are those, uh, your album is still uh, selling Gone. a lot? Gone. Gone. It's Gone. off the charts. Off the charts. It's, uh, it's a memory now. Yeah. <laughs> How high on the charts did it get? It went to number eight. Yeah. 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 Well, that represents a lot of dough, doesn't it's it? Top ten. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we're waiting for it too. The record company says it's uh, it's in the mail. For uh, uh, again, I, and I hate to burden you with this, but yeah. for people who are not aware of the origin of uh, the McKenzie brothers, do you want to outline that for us? Your turn. My turn. Yeah, I do this all the time. Great. All Folks, right. I just want to say one thing before I do this. Dave Thomas is sitting in this seat here. Maybe you can see this on the wide shot. This is known as the hot seat in talk television, because the last time we were here on your show in January, he fell asleep in this seat, I right on the I air. I didn't really fall He actually asleep. dozed off? No, that's not fair to you. What happened was that I cut... <laughs> <laughs> oh, dozed boy, somebody off. get me a shovel quick. Okay, no, uh, I... I, I, I I did, I was we, You and I were having mind. a nice chat. You right. asked him a question, yeah. and he, he... I thought you were excluding me. I didn't think you two guys liked me. That's what it was. because he was sleeping. No, really, actually, well, you were probably exhausted, weren't you? Although, That's exactly right. <laughs> Thank you. But, but it, it wasn't apparent from the discussion. No. No, not at all. And uh, you, we're going to find him nodding off, too, if he, uh, if we uh, don't... Uh, yeah, Boy, okay. I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, I'm sorry. In but... Canada, as well as having dollars worth about 10 cents uh, American, uh, we have something called Canadian content regulations where on television and radio... What are you doing right now? Is this the question he asked This is answering the ago? question, yeah. Yeah, why? Oh, okay. Why don't you go back to sleep, sleep, Dave? Huh? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'll be here so, if you need me. Uh, in the third season of SCTV, when we were, we were doing a half-hour show before we went on to the network, and the show was two minutes uh, longer because of less commercials being on the public network. And the producers asked us for uh, that that two-minute segment be Canadian, Canadian content. And we said, you know, what do you want us to do? You want us to put on jack shirts and drink beer and, uh, like, talk like uh, we're from the Great White North, eh? And they said, yeah, that'll be fine. Thank you. <laughs> so we started doing it. And it, it became the runaway hit of the decade, as they say, after that early decade. It's only 82. Yeah, you know? that's true. There's a lot more uh, to come, I hope. Yeah. yeah. And, and you mentioned you got a letter from Steven Spielberg about something you did on the show. Yeah, Rick did a scene on the show called Merv the Special Edition, where it was seven minutes longer because of a, a special edition directed by Steven Spielberg. And he asked me to play Spielberg in it, and I did, and uh, Spielberg saw it, or so he said when he, he called first, then he sent a letter with a, a ten-point critique on how to impersonate him. <laughs> and, uh, Things like uh, your total lack of humor and your impersonation of me was dead on. Things like that. Yeah, I would not know where to begin to... Of course, I don't do impressions. And... That was a tough one because uh, we didn't really have any uh, tape, but he directed me in that. You, do, you do an awful lot of there. impressions on the show and other things that we're going to talk about in a minute. We have to uh, pause here for just one thing, if you don't mind. <laughs> It's really coming down now. Better throw another couch on the fire. Of uh, we're back with uh, Mr. Dave Thomas and uh, Rick Moranis. You mentioned, I mentioned, someone mentioned uh, impressions. Uh, you do a lot of them. Favorites. You want to do any of them for us tonight? Well, you know, being uh, the uh, the Christmas season and everything, I thought I'd do Bobby. You know, now he he'd he'd be on his uh, he'd be on one of his military tours right now. You know, and those kids in the military, you know, they're doing a tough and dirty job that nobody else wants to do. Well, and that's why. 
Robert well, would be doing his Christmas special about now, wouldn't he? For yeah. the real Christmas. Yeah, yeah. He'd, he'd be, be across the hall working on the special. And he wouldn't let somebody cut him off Sorry. like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'd be off, kid, you know. <laughs> no, but uh, he, yeah, I got... he gave me one that I could never do, you know. On the show, you throw curves at fellow cast members, ask them to do something. And if they're bold enough to try it, great. If not, they'll try and bail out, pulling the shoot on an impression. And sometimes you'll get, you'll get an impression to do, and you go into the makeup room, and the makeup girls will laugh right at you and say, you can't look like that. <laughs> so I wrote this piece with Dick Blasucci and Paul Flaherty. It was, uh, it was another Merv piece. It was the Merv Griffith show where Merv goes to Mayberry and plays the part of Andy Griffith. So <laughs> Eugene got Floyd the Barber, and he wound up looking exactly like him. He was terrific. John Candy got Otis the drunk, and he was fabulous in that. Joe, the boldest attempt at Barney Fife anyone had ever seen. Catherine was Aunt B, and Dave got Gomer Pyle. <laughs> now, this man can do Bob Hope. Rich Little has problems with Bob. I mean, his, this, he can do any impression, but he couldn't do Gomer Pyle. He can sing like Gomer Pyle. Yeah. I just have problems with his speaking voice. <laughs> I can't get it down, but if you want me to sing... That always struck me as strange that he would have such a goofy speaking voice yeah. and a powerful singing so voice. So the scene ended in, uh, at this birthday party, Gomer's surprise birthday party, and Gomer was singing New York, New York, and then Merv turns around and says, isn't he fabulous? Gomer Pyle is with us. <laughs> so we're about to shoot the scene. It's about 10 minutes till we're shooting the scene, and I walk into my dressing room, and I overhear, by accident, him talking to the props guys, and he's saying, uh, and I was like, get me a plate of peas. I just want a plate of peas and set it on the piano. And I go, wait a second, what's going on? I it, said, Liz, the reason I want the plate of peas is after I do the song, when it comes for me to change into a speaking voice, I'm going to go right to a plate of peas, choke to death. Somebody's got to give me the Heinlein <laughs> method, but I'm not coming to. <laughs> anyway, in desperation, we came up with the way out of it, which was um, the song finishes, and I go, Gomer Pyle is with us. And, and Dave says, <laughs> Jeez, it's, you know, lame Gomer Pyle impression. <laughs> Jeez, it's really great to be here. And I go, isn't that a good Gomer? Fred Travellina is with us. <laughs> the one he did there is better than the one I actually did. You know? I, all right. Okay. Uh, Bob, uh, Hope is the most difficult one? For me to do? For anybody, I guess. You've mentioned that. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I just sort of uh, I watched his movies when I was a kid, and I, I, I got into him. But I also got into Richard Harris as having only two speaking voices. One low and intense like this. And another one very high and high up there like that. And I, I always wondered... I always wondered why he never spoke in the middle, you know? And I noticed, too, that my... Michael Caine Michael shouts a lot, you know, in all these movies. He shouts, uh, listen to me, I'll tell you exactly what I think, you know? And uh, so I got into those British guys, and, uh, but I, somebody simple like Gomer Pot, I can't do John Wayne, I can't do Ed Sullivan, I can't do any of the ones that everyone else can do. And, and so, Rick, Rick does, uh, you also Ed have... Ed Sullivan, them. John Wayne, all the ones that everybody... <laughs> I don't know what it is. But uh, I don't think anybody else does Merv Griffin that I know of, and um, Woody Allen you do very well. Yeah, well, I'm waiting for Woody's next two movies before I try him again. Yeah. I just want to see what he's been doing for the past couple of years. I really, I, I mean, I love his work, and I, it was out of tribute that... I... Speaking of work, you guys do your show in uh, Toronto, and uh, is, is the show going to stay in Toronto, uh, going to Hollywood, or...? I think we had more luck in Edmonton than in Toronto, so we're going to try moving it further north. We're going to the polar ice cap. Mm -hmm. <laughs> going to try... It seems to work. The farther away we get from civilization, the better it goes. It helps. Uh, yeah. what, now, what is next for uh, you gentlemen and, and uh, I'm Bob and Doug? Uh, they had the album? Yeah. Yeah, we're, I think we're going to do a movie with uh, the McKenzie brothers. In the fall. Uh -huh. It'll be and a two-reeler, uh, black and white, no sound. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a uh, piano player picked out to do the music for us. Nice and, art uh, cards, and if it works, we'll do another one for the following Saturday. We have to uh, pause here for just one thing, if you don't mind. Uh, nothing really, this is uh, dealing with Christmas here, embodies the spirit of Christmas in New York. Then the hustle and bustle of activity at Rockefeller Center, of course, the skating rink and the lighting of the big tree down there. Um, <laughs> so earlier today, uh, we captured some of that holiday spirit on videotape. Let's take a look at it now. Of course, this is looking toward the RCA building. There's the tree. <laughs> and I guess they'll be lighting that later tonight, and it'd just be a, an unbelievably breathtaking sight. And of course, uh, uh, people doing some last-minute shopping and ne'er-do-wells and thugs alike. In a minute, you're going to be looking at the world-famous uh, ice skating rink at Rockefeller Plaza. And there it is. And, and it features the world's only skating waiters. There's one now. And here come some festive holiday skaters. And uh, if you've ever been in this town, you know what magic this really is this time of year. And 
We thought you'd get a kick out of taking a look at it. <laughs> yes, there they go. The happy skaters on their way to holiday fun here in New York City. Thank you very much for coming Thanks. Merry down Christmas. Here to Merry celebrate Christmas. the holiday with us, ladies and gentlemen. Rick Moranis and Dave Thomas. Merry Christmas. We're going to pause here, but we'll be back. <laughs> Nights like this that I'm sorry we only have 90 minutes. Uh, <laughs> but we, before we end the festivities here tonight, and you all go out to your Christmas parties or home to spend the time with your families, I received a very special letter this week that I, I felt I had to share with you, and I'll read it for you right now. Dear Mr. Letterman, I am a little girl seven years old, and I still believe in Santa Claus. The kids I go to school with jeer at me and taunt me because they say there's no such thing. My parents tell me there is a Santa Claus and I don't know who to believe. So I am writing to you because I know that since you are on national television, everything you say has to be true. <laughs> Please, is there a Santa Claus? And it's signed, Little Connie. Well, you know, Connie, there is a Santa Claus and to prove it, we have him here tonight. Would you please welcome my next guest, Santa. Be here. Uh, you are the real Santa Claus. Uh, yes, David, I am. Well, thank you very much for being here. I would like you to uh, uh, ask, uh, answer a couple of questions oh, for certainly. us. Do you have a lot of helpers, a lot of elves? Uh, well, in fact, Dave, I have thousands of helpers. You know, in fact, everybody who believes in me is really one of my helpers. Now, uh, now are they organized? Do you have a union? Uh, yes, there is a union, as a matter of fact, Local 458. Uh, all the helpers get mental, uh, medical and dental benefits, just like uh, all the other unions Now, do. I've always wondered about your reindeer. How do you get the reindeer? Deer to fly. Well, uh, you know, you just uh, sort of get up on the roof and uh, you uh, take off from the top of the building and you say, giddy up, giddy up. And they and, just take uh, off? And they take off. Uh, let me ask you about the list of uh, good boys and, and bad little girls. Do you actually keep a list of who's been oh, good and who's oh, been oh, bad? Oh, de definitely, David, certainly. Mm -hmm. Do you have that yeah. list with you here tonight? Uh, the list, I'm sure I have it, David. I, I have it someplace. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, that's right. David, I, I had it when I left home. Uh, Mr. Letterman, I can't go through with this. I'm not the real Santa Claus. I'm sorry. I'm just a sick man who needs help. I'm sorry. I just saw another opportunity to be on television, and I took it. I'm sorry, Mr. Letterman. I can't seem to control my behavior. I don't know what's the matter with me. I think maybe I'm not getting enough zinc or something. I don't know. <laughs> Well, it's been quite a night, hasn't it? I'd like to thank everyone who helped make this an extra special Christmas for us. Thanks for watching. Have a good night and a pleasant weekend. We'll see you New Year's. This has been a Melman production. Oh, it's a fine show. You came on a good night, ladies and gentlemen. I've already introduced Paul, haven't I? That's kind of an awkward move for me now here, isn't it? I, just... I don't know what to do with it. I, can, I can, can completely screwed that up by uh, introducing uh, Paul, yeah. uh, introducing earlier, but uh, we'll make it up to you. Don't you worry, ladies and gentlemen. Well, <sighs> all of us here at the office are still reeling from our network Christmas special that took place last Friday, and, and if these dummy telegrams from our prop department are any indication... <laughs> It looks like the rest of America has also been talking about it, too. So let's take a look at a couple of them to see uh, 
What they're saying here says, uh, Dear Dave, congratulations on your wonderful Christmas show. I particularly like the guardian angels singing Christmas carols, especially since they once saved my life on the subway. But what happened when Larry Melman was supposed to read The Night Before Christmas, signed a puzzled fan? That's just one telegram. Another one says, Dear Dave, loved your Christmas show. My favorite was Jane Pauley, since she saved my life once with her, with her tips on hair dryer safety. And by the way, what was the deal with Mr. Melman reading The Night Before Christmas? Was this some kind of private joke or, or what? <laughs> and it's also signed a confused viewer. Well, if you were watching Friday night, indeed, we did have our first Christmas special, and Larry Bud Melman was going to read the night before Christmas to a, a lot of little children who were uh, eagerly looking forward to that event. Um, if you saw it, you know that something uh, hideous went awry. Uh, and so to explain that incident, uh, we'd like to introduce uh, the two people responsible for it, uh, late night production... Late night production assistants who, in order to protect their future careers, we're just going to call Babs and Jude. They're over here in the shadows. <laughs> First of all, uh, uh, Babs, uh, welcome, welcome to the show. And uh, what was... Uh, uh, what went wrong exactly when Mr. Melman started to read The Night Before Christmas? Well, um, actually, I had thought that the, uh, Twas the Night Before Christmas was on cue cards. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have it put on cue cards because I thought we, um, we had the book of the poem. Yeah. So this is a, <laughs> just a wires were crossed. Jude thought that the man would read The Night Before Christmas off cue cards. You thought he would read it right out of this book right here. Well, not that book. Yeah. Uh, now, for uh, just tell us what this book is exactly. Well, I had put on the prop list that we needed a book, but I didn't say what book we needed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just said I just said we needed a book, so they they just picked any book, and it happened to be an, uh, a French catechism book. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> essentially, that's what happened. Uh, the kids were assembled. Larry Budd was going to read The Night Before Christmas out of the French Catechism book, No Cue Cards. No right? Cue Cards. Okay, let's, uh, let's show you how that went. Uh, this was Friday night from our Gala Christmas Spectacular. <laughs> and uh, just take a look at the monitors. Larry Budd Melman, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, God. It was, a night, it was a night before Christmas. Not a creature was stirring. Not even a mouse. Oh. Now I gotta read Spanish. Je pourquoi avez vous? Not a creature with story, not even a mouse. And, oh, God. And Santa Claus came down the chimney. <laughs> Came down the chimney. No, I, I don't know them. Oh, God. So, as I was saying before, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. And old St. Nicholas came down through the chimney and gave out the presents to the children. And that ain't Christmas. <laughs> oh, and as I was saying before, and, and it turned out to be a very Merry Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. It was magic, wasn't it? It was indeed magic. Um, 
And, and that's, that's what happened, and I want to thank you uh, two women for uh, having, having the courage to come forward to tell your story here tonight. Uh, and I, let me just say that the, they do wonderful work, and we're proud to have them on our staff. We're going to pause. I will be right back to meet Mr. Larry Walters, the armchair balloon. Thank you.